Nice little review for test four. So let's see, the first one here, they wanted me to graph, and they gave me y equals one fourth to the x. Now, I will say, y'all can place this on the calculator pretty quick and pick one of them pictures. I'm just going to knock out real quick by hand here. So I'm going to make me an X and Y table. And then I'm just going to pick me a couple X values to use. Um, so anyway, by hand or just like that on that calculator. So when X is zero, anything to the zero power equals one. When x is one, this would be one fourth to the first power, which would be one fourth. And then if that was a two, one fourth to the second power would give me one over 16. So you see these numbers are definitely getting smaller as the x's get bigger on this. So I'm just gonna go out about five on mine. Um, and all these exponential graphs will go right to one because when you make that exponent to zero, anything to that zero is going to go right to one. So it's going to cross right to one. At one, I'm at one fourth. At two, I'm at one sixteenth. So they're getting smaller and smaller as you go. But y'all, there's only going to be one graph that's got that shape to it, okay? So this graph will come down over here. It's crossing through there and it's just going to try to hug that x axis and keep getting closer and closer, but it never gets to it, okay? Number two, they started doing some moves on this. So let's see, this is f of x equals two to the x minus one. So we're going to tell what graph we're starting with. So I'm going to start with y equals, and they'll give you a blank and an x, and all you do is put the base in there. So the base of my problem was 2, so all I would do is put my 2 in that blank. So you start with the base, I mean y equals 2 to the x, and then we've got to figure out what that negative 1 is doing to the graph. Anytime you attack the exponent, you're going to go left or right. If it's negative, it's going to go right. If it's positive, it's going to go left. So that's negative. So this graph will move right one unit. Now, you have to graph this on your own. So let me just show you. You're going to click on the uh, curvy graph, it looks like a curve, and then you just click the graph. When you click graph, it's going to put it on the graph and it's going to open up this other window. The two things you're worried about on this window. The first thing, since you moved it to the right, you're going to look on the horizontal. And you want to move that horizontal right until you get it on positive one. Okay. But that's not the important thing y'all got to do. On these graphs down in the bottom left, it'll say it'll say base in that bottom left. By default, they got a little E there. You gotta change that base to match your base of the two. If you don't, the graph looks just the same, but but not having that two base instead of that e, it makes it uh, off the coordinates just a little bit. Let me see. Um, y'all move this thing around a little bit. Just gonna put the graph where it needs to be. And then, uh, 
Right, three was the same thing as this, but it had a couple more moves on it. So they're giving us on this one f of x equals two to the x plus three minus five. So this is going to have two moves on it. So we start with y equals blank to the x. So it looks like mine again is what a base one and two on it. So I will put a two in that line. And then we got to know what these two moves are doing to it. So the plus three, since it's on the x line, it's going to move the left three units. So we left three units. The negative five is going to move me down five units. All right, so let me see. You're going to do the same thing. You want to click the curvy graph and then click on the graph. That's going to open up your box. This time you got a horizontal and a vertical move. So your horizontal um, went left three, so you're going to move it left to your negative three. Your vertical, let's see, vertical went down five, so it's going to go left to negative five. And then you got to remember down in the little corner, change that base from an E. Two two. Now these are awesome. You just plot them really quick on that calculator, um, and you can sort of see all these graphs. Normally, you just want to come right through here, so you can sort of tell on that what's happening to them that they're being moved up and down and stuff. All right, so those first three dealt with that. Then we started getting into the interest formula. So this one says, suppose $68,000. So I got $68,000 investing at 6.5% interest. Compounded quarterly. They want me to find the function for the amount to which the investment grows after t years, and then find the actual amounts at zero, four, seven, and ten years. So, the general formula for this is a, which is the amount you've made, equals t, which is your principal balance, times one plus. R divided by N, all raised to the N times T. So, if they want to find a function that relates it to the T years, I need to have values for everything other than the T. And then I can use that formula to plug in the amounts they want, okay? So, we know it's going to be A of T, basically. Because T is my variable, okay? P is my starting amount, which is 68,000. Then we got one plus R is your interest rate. Now remember, they're giving me 6.5%, but you got to turn that into an actual decimal. So to get rid of the print, uh, percent and turn it into a decimal, you just move it left twice and add in zero. So I'm going to get what a point zero six five for my interest rate. N, N is the number of compounds per year. So they're saying it got compounded quarterly. So that's going to be four times. 
So then that would be a four, and then times the t on the outside for the exponent. Now, y'all, this is the general formula, but Math Lab wants us to figure what's in the parentheses because it's all numbers. So that part they said could go further. So bring down your 68,000. If you punch this in the calculator, you get 1.01625. And then it's all raised to the four times T still. So math lab is really picky. If you put it one plus 0.065 over four, it marks it wrong and tells you this could have simplified further and stuff like that. So this is the general formula we want. So then it asks you, how much money is in the account? After T equals zero, four, seven, and ten years. So y'all basically I'm gonna plug that T four times to get me some numbers out of this. Now it's an investment, so I'm hoping these numbers go up and everything should be sixty-eight thousand or greater, okay? So I'll start with T equals zero. I'm going to take this formula, 68,000. So this would be what? A at zero equals 68,000 times 1.01625 raised to the four times zero. So basically, each time I'm going to be doing is taking that exponent. So I'm not going to work out all the steps, but four times zero is zero. Anything to the zero power equals one, and one times 68,000 is going to be 68,000. But you, you got to expect that, right? Because no time has passed. You put in $68,000. There better be $68,000 in there, right? <laughs> all right, what was that? We said uh, T was four. So this would be A of four equals 68,000 times 1.01625. And then my exponent would be four times four. Um, and there won't be around to the nearest dollar. So there won't be no cents after the decimal. All right, so we're going to push in my 68,000. Times my 1.01625 and then raise that to the four times four. So I'm getting like 88,007. 88,007 dollars. And mine had like 0.16, so since that decimal was smaller, I didn't have to round my money up on that one. Uh, next was T equals seven. So same thing, we'll find A is seven. So that'd be what, four times seven this time for my exponent. But notice I started with 68,000, just after four years, you already made almost $20,000. That's not bad. So when I did it with seven, I came up with ooh, 106,789. But I guess if you think about it, that 6.5 is a pretty high interest rate for them to be making money on. Seven years, they went to, they started with 68 and I got 106,000. So we're definitely expecting in 10 years it to be even higher, right? So this would be A of 10 equals my 68,000 times 1.01625 raised to the 4 times 10. So pushing it on that calculator, I ended up with 129,578. 
make sure that was a yeah, 578. So 10 years, they almost doubled that money. Pretty dang close, right? They started with what, 68? So pretty close to doubling it, you know. So. Now I'll tell you a little trick. This formula right here, you can put this in y1 equals instead of a t, make that an x. And then go to the table, find what numbers you are, like uh what was my numbers up? Uh, zero, four, seven, and ten. Go find zero on the x-axis, it'll give you the value. It'll give you all these money values. All right, so on Melissa's sixth birthday. So sixth birthday, she gets a three thousand dollar CD. Earns four percent interest. Compounded semi-annually. If it matures on her 12th birthday, how much money is available? So matures on the 12th birthday. How much money available? But we're gonna work it the same way we just work these problems, okay? Let me give me a better marker. So we know the formula I just gave us a while ago is A equals P times one plus R over N, all raised to the N times T. And we should have everything we need to figure this one out. So we're looking for that amount. We're starting with 3,000 for P. Then we got one plus interest rate was what, 4%? So to turn 4% into a decimal, move it left twice, so you're going to have to add it to zero. So that would be a 0 0.04. So how many compounds would y'all figure semi-annually? Two. So that will be two for my N. And then N is two here times T. T's and years. So we got to figure out, they gave it to her on her sixth birthday. It matured on her 12th birthday. So they made what, 12 minus six would be six years? So that'd be two times six for that exponent. Then just going to go on that calculator and see what we get. So here we go. Uh, round to the nearest cent. So it's going to be a decimal. Well, two address, let's see, 3,000. So I got a 3,804. So 3,804. 0.725, so I'll make that 0.73. And then be done with that, okay? And I guess that's probably the main thing you want to check for on those problems is those amounts are going up instead of down, okay? All right, then it's time to play on the calculator because uh, of all of these logs, I'm just going to punch that log base and go on them, okay? Right, we're gonna find the log. We got log base 10 of 0 0.001. You can basically push that on the front of that calculator. Um, since it's a log base 10, that log would work on the front. And then put in 0 0.001. 
enter, you get a negative three. All right, seven is log base six of six to the second power. You can put that in on the calculator. So y'all heard the trick. Anytime this base matches that result based on exponent, your answer is going to be that exponent. But all these y'all can put on that calculator, okay? Log base 27. So log base 27 of the three. Now, if you get a decimal, turn it back into a fraction. But on that, you just hit the math button and go down to that long base that's down in there. So hopefully you got a 0 0.33333 or a fraction of one third. Should be a true statement. So two times two times two times two is 
16, okay? And then you know we're going to have one with a bunch of numbers here, I mean a bunch of letters. Log base n of t equals negative x. Y'all remember if, if you're doing these on math lab, when they give you capital letters, you use capital letters, and if they give you the lower case, because that thing's really picky about the letters too, okay? All right, so my base is the n. So bring down the n. Exponent is the negative x. And n to the negative x has to equal the t. Fourteen wants you to use calculator and figure out what is ln of 880.1. On these problems, when they ask you to do the logarithms, you got to round them four decimal places, okay? We got an ln on front of our calculator by four, so I'm just going to hit the ln and punch in 880.1. So going four decimal places, I'm going to get a 6.78. And then let's say I got a zero, zero, three. So that's just going to say what is zero, zero. Fifteen says find log. Now, this says you change the base, but we all got that log base feature. So I'm just going to hit it with the log base feature. This is log base 3 of 14. So to do that problem, here's your math button. And arrow down until you find log base. Once you find log base, we'll hit enter. And it brings up the log with the stuff in it. So put your 3 down there for the base. And then arrow over and put in the 14. So rounding the four decimal places, I'm getting about a 2.4022. So I round my one up because of that seven behind it. Oh, questions on that. Not too bad because there's a lot of problems you can actually do on that calculator on this test. All right, then at 16, I start hitting the, the newest stuff. All right, so 16 express as a sum of logs. They're giving us log base 18 of 18 times 3.4. Now, I don't have to evaluate We just got to rewrite them as a sum of logs. And it's true because since these are being multiplied, you would rewrite them as addition. So you distribute log 18 to both of these. So I get a log 18 of 18. Plus the log 18 of 3.4. Okay, so when they're being multiplied, you write them as adding. If they're being divided, you write them as subtraction, okay? Because remember, these logarithms are really exponents, and they're going to follow the same rules as your exponents. So when you multiply the x squared times the x to the fifth, you added the exponent. So that's sort of what this is following. Okay. Express as a product. Y'all listen, y'all are gonna follow this problem just like I did. They're gonna give you two numbers for the product, and you're gonna do right them out like that, okay? This one says express as a product. 
they're giving me log base p of x to the 16. The only thing you're doing to this problem is taking this exponent to 16 and bring it down to the front, just like we did all last week. So that this gives you a 16 times the log p of x. We have the product, so we solve. So a lot of these problems are going to just have that one move. Once you get that one move, go on, okay? Oh, this is step four. Your final will be your easiest step. Believe it, multiple choice, 25 questions. I'm going to review that Monday. Um, but I got like videos on the thing that I do that I've already worked in the past on that. So, final to read your test, and I use it also to count that as a final, but I also use it to replace one of those tests. So, if you bombed out one of my four tests, your final's good, I'm going to replace that whole test with that final score. Okay? A lot of people always use that because they do better on that final. Don't be scared of the final. I would be more scared of test two and three than I would my final in this class. I was scared of the final. No, don't be worried about this final. It's not bad. There's only two hard questions to me, and that's the one with that ladder leading up against the wall. You had to do it. A square plus B square plus C square. That one, and then, uh, yeah, that's all you have to do. Works in the hard one. But a lot of these are like five and zero, so just be getting with that six to be in, and, you know, stuff like that. And we'll, we'll definitely review that one, okay? So, and then you got that study guide in there that we got set up. It's pretty much just like a final. So, go through that little study guide that we set up in the math lab. And you'll start, you do it one or two times, you'll start seeing repetitious type patterns on it, you know? Oh, but this one's a, we might as a difference. Yep. Oh, but this one says rewrite as sums or differences. All right, you're giving me log base C of X to the third. Y to the A and a Z. So we're being multiplied. So your first step is to rewrite a man's addition like I did here. So distribute the log C to everybody. So I get a log C of X to the third plus a log C of Y to the A plus a log C of Z. So we're rewritten that sum, but now to make this problem finish, all these exponents have to be moved to the front. And rewritten as the product on that part, okay? So I'll get three log C of X plus eight log C of Y plus a log C of Z. Matching expressed in terms of sums or differences, they're giving us log base b of p to the third q to the sixth over m to the fourth b to the ninth. Now, I like this one in, in, uh, in the test, it's a multiple choice one on this one at least. All right, here's the trick on this. If they're on top of that fraction, when I rewrite them, they're going to be added. If they're on the bottom, they're going to be subtracted. And I'm going to distribute the log base b to all four of these. So I get log base b of p to the third plus a log base b of q to the sixth. Those two factors were on top, they're added. 
Now B4, B9 are on bottom, so they're going to be subtracted. And then minus the log B of B to the ninth. Three of those, I'm going to bring that exponents down to the front. That's the first three. The last one, since this base matches this B, raised to an exponent, this whole last part is going to only equal A9, okay? Because that, N, that log B is a B part equals 1. So bringing my exponents down, I get 3 log B of P plus 6 log B of Q minus 4 log B of M minus 9. So the B, log B of B to the 9 equals 9, okay? I just to say a simplify. I think that I think one of the tricky ones. All right, 20 was ln x squared plus 5x plus 6 minus ln x plus 3. Since they're being subtracted, I'm going to rewrite it as division. So you're going to have the ln, the top will be x squared plus 5x plus 6. The bottom will be x plus 3. So the trick on this one is to simplify the fraction part of it. So what you got to do is factor the top and see if we can get a factor that will match that x plus 3 on the bottom. So you get a factor? No. So let me see if I got this on your factor. You got program there. And you got my factor program. So don't you number again just like you would on the quad. One, five, and six on that, A, B, and C, and bam, it'll factor it for you. That's positive, so both these would be positive. Factors of six at equal five would be three and two. Well, that should have factored that into X plus three, X plus two for you. And the B was what's in the middle, five. And then six for the C. Yeah, there it is. So back to that top. So you had to do that on this problem because you see these x plus 3 factors? They got to cancel. So I end up with an ln of my x plus 2 for my final answer, okay? And that's the only thing you got to do on that is just make sure you factor that top so you can cancel those. All right, single log and single time, same thing. Log x squared minus 5x minus 6 minus log x squared minus 1. So they're being subtracted, so you're going to rewrite it as a fraction with the x squared minus 5x minus 6 on top, x squared minus 1 on the bottom. Now listen, when you back to this one, the top, 1, negative 5, negative 6. The bottom, 1, 0, negative 1. Because you don't have an x in the middle, it's got to be a 0 on that, okay? So what would have happened when you back to that? The top, that was negative, so I have unlike sign. And on the bottom, that'd be x plus 1, x minus 1. And then and you see, once again, I'm going to cancel these x plus 1s out. Now, let me tell you a trick on this one. Since it's state of fraction, it still has the top and the bottom, you don't have to put them in parentheses. 
So you can just put x minus 6 over x minus 1 and be done. We do solve. They're giving me 2 to the power of x equals 4. Ooh, All right, so you're going to have one where you can rewrite it as a same base, one you can. So this one you can. We can rewrite four as two squared. So I'm going to rewrite four as two squared. So I get two to the five x equals two squared. Anytime you can do that where these bases match, the bases match. That means the exponents have to be equal. So that means 5x has to equal 2. Okay? And then solve that for the x. So we'll divide that by 5 and be done with this. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to solve for x. Solve for x. So remember, 22 you can rewrite, 23 you're not going to be able to rewrite. Twenty-three has two to the x equals nine. So you see, this time I can't take a two and raise it to an exponent to equal nine. So since I can't rewrite this one like I did this one, I'm going to take. So I'm going to write that can't rewrite. So I'm going to take logs of both sides. So the log of 2 to the x is going to equal the log of 9. The reason we did that, because guess what? I can do this x. I want to now bring it down to the front, right? So bring your x down to the front. So that you get x times log 2 equals log 9. Can y'all find a set? Divide both sides by log 2. So the logs cancel on that side. Now, when you push this on your calculator, and you do log 9, that's going to open the parentheses. Close that parentheses before you hit division. And then on bottom, open and close. It'll give you the first parentheses. You just got to close it before you hit that divide, okay? All right, so let's see. Log of 9 divided by, what was that, log of 2? I'm getting 3.1699. Solve the following logarithmic equation. Log base 5 of t plus 21 minus log base 5 of t plus 5 equals log base 5 of t. Uh, T plus five. T plus five. Yeah. Let me make that look clear. So the first thing you got to do, you got two logs on the left side. You got to combine these logs. Since they're being subtracted, it's going to look like division. So log five of T plus 21 divided by T plus five we equal log base 5 of a t. You know, there's the golden rule. If they're being added, they go to the top of these fractions. Anything that's being subtracted, those go to the bottom of the fraction. All right. The log bases match. So 
So since the log base is mass, that means this result equals T. So T plus 21 over T plus 5 equals T. So now I'm going to put a 100 T and do some cross multiplying. That top times that bottom, and then this bottom times that top. So T plus 21 times 1 is going to equal T plus 21. The other side, T times T is T squared, plus 5 times T is 5T. All right, I got T squared in it, so I'm going to get everything on one side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract the T from both sides and subtract 21 from both sides. When I do that, I get zero equals T squared. Uh, well, I got five minus one is four T. And then minus that 21. At this point, you can hit it with the quad and get the final answers or factor. Okay, I want to work out my factoring. T to T, one positive, one's negative. I'm going to get a seven and a three. And then set both these equal to zero. Now, remember, since this is a logarithmic equation. Since this is a logarithmic equation, I cannot take negative answers. So you see that negative seven? I cannot take that answer because I can't take it long as a negative number. It gives me an error message. So the only answer is t equals three. Okay. So remember, logarithmic equation. Get rid of them negative answers. Cannot take long as a negative number. I think I've got about three minutes to finish this last one, I guess. I didn't think we'd get done, but all for x. Log base six of x plus eight plus log base six of x minus eight equals two. You know, once again, I'm going to combine those logs on that left side. So I get a log base six. Since these ones are being added, you write this as a product. It'll be the x plus eight times the x minus eight, and all that's going to equal two. <coughs> so next, what I would do, I would foil that, but I'm going to just cut through the chase on it. Instead of pulling it out, this equals x squared minus 64. All that's equal to minus 2. So the difference between this one and 24, I don't have logs on both sides of this one. So since I don't have logs on both sides, I'm going to rewrite as exponential. So my base is a 6. Exponent is the two, and that's going to equal to x squared minus 64. Okay. So six squared. That's what 36. I got x squared in this, so I'm going to minus 36 from both sides. Get that all over on there. All right, so let's see. That's going to be zero equal to x squared minus 100. Then I'm going to factor that. Remember, factor one zero, negative 100 if you factor it. But that's going to be the x plus and the x minus squared 100 is. So 
So that when you just got x squared and a number behind it being subtracted, just take the square root of that number and that'll give you your factors on it, okay? All right, so let's see what the answer will be. So I'll get a negative 10. And over here, I'm going to get a positive 10. So what's my final answer? Oh, what I did is it negative. Yeah, cancel the negative there. Cancel that negative on these laws, and the only answer is going to be the positive 10, okay? So, y'all, you're take this and use that to do the study guide because those problems are going to follow just like this. All they're doing is changing the numbers up on it, okay? Instead of a log base six, you might have a log base seven or something. So, to get used to the steps, when they're adding, they get multiplied. When they're subtracted, they get divided. Okay. So y'all can get on this one and then that final. You can use it to replace any both tests. Um. In our final exam, that was only worth twenty percent, where it used to be thirty percent of the grade. So it's got less power than it used to have. Um. But I think y'all been getting good. Participation points. They have been giving you all good on those. I think so. Woo! Okay, we made it. <laughs> all right, so the next class y'all have with me will be Monday final exam review. And I'll go through the 25 questions you really need to focus on for that, okay? All right, and I'll get our video sent out later for y'all today, and then I will see y'all Monday. If you need me before then, just email me. Okay. Can I have a question on number four? Uh huh. So, number four, it's like the I'm sorry, you got it. Uh, and then, uh, that's like three. Okay, so you just, I thought this table. But then, like, okay, so this one was seven. Mm -hmm. And then it said, like, let me find out to do the nearest dollars. Oh, okay. So that's why. Mm -hmm. It was eight and a half. I'll see you later. Seven. Oh, did I get something different up there? Well, this one right here says 106, 7, 9, and then right here it says 106, 7, 8, 9. So, oh, yeah, because this one was rounding up. There must be some more decimals after that thing or something. Okay. Because I got a little confused because you said we could do it on there, so I was checking the answers. Yeah, well, let me put that in again because let's see, I got 16,000. Uh, and then the exponent was four times seven, that'd be what, 28? <laughs> oh, I didn't guess that one. Okay, 68,000, 1.0, 1, 6, 2, 5, to the 28th. So seven eight is a half. And uh so what was up with my table then? Oh, you need another zero here. Oh man, so let's put another zero in there. There we go. Now let's try that. Uh second table. Let's try to graph it now. But those numbers are big 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 graph. That's not my bad. There we go. One on oh, <laughs> What zero makes a difference? Oh no, no, that's all right. That's all right. But I was trying to figure out, well, what the hell happened here? <laughs> See, I always do that. Those are like the all those are like always the 